The following problem was pulled from the Utah Math Olympiad. This is you. Whether you like it or not, you and I are about to play a little game on this 8x8 grid. The game starts with a green stone placed on the center intersection of the grid, and we'll be taking turns with you going first. On your turn, you have to move the green stone from its current position to a vertically or horizontally adjacent intersection that isn't occupied by another stone. And then, once you're done, place a red stone on the green stone's previous spot. As for my turn, I have to place exactly one red stone on any unoccupied intersection. And the game goes on in this way until somebody is declared the winner. My goal is to force you to move the green stone into one of the corner intersections, which we'll label A, B, C, and D. If this ends up happening, then, well, you lose the game. However, you'll win the game if we reach a point where you're unable to move the green stone anymore, with it not being on a corner intersection, of course. Now, if we assume that both of us play optimally, that is, we're both geniuses and we'll always play the best possible move on each of our turns, then which one of us has the upper hand and, as a result, can always win the game? And as for a more interesting question to ask, how many red stones will be on the board by the end of the game? Here's your chance to pause the video, if you'd like to take some time to think about it before we go through the solution together. Okay, let's talk strategy. On my end, it may seem like a good idea to just choose a corner to try to force you into, like let's say corner D for example, and then slowly fill the board up with redstone starting from the opposite corner until you have nowhere else to go. But this isn't really a good strategy. I mean, first of all, it would just take way too long to execute. Not to mention the fact that you also have the ability to place redstones on the board, so you could very easily box yourself in and win the game before I'm even done filling up half the board. Now, for you to be able to pull this off, you'll have to surround the green stone with some closed connection of redstones. It doesn't matter how small or how big this connection is, as long as the green stone is blocked from being able to access any of the four corners, then you'll guarantee yourself a win. And you can even use the walls as part of this connection too. Well, obviously as long as you don't also have a corner in there with you. All this to say, in theory, there should be a lot of different ways for you to win the game, right? Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but the game is unfortunately rigged in my favor and it's not difficult to show why that's the case. So let's do it. At the start of the game, you have the option of moving the green stone in one of four directions, up, down, left, or right. Without loss of generality, let's assume that you move the green stone up. Now, from here, I have the option of picking which of the two corners closest to the green stone I'd like for you to lose on. And again, without loss of generality, let's assume I choose corner B. And so my next move will be to place a red stone directly to your left. Now, notice that on your turn, you can only move the green stone either up or to the right both of which bringing you one step closer to corner B. And it doesn't really matter which direction you choose to go in, because once you make a move, a redstone will be placed on your previous spot, preventing you from moving back in that direction. So all I have to do is block one of the three remaining directions and leave you with the two that bring you closer to the doomed corner. The following strategy shows how I can keep restricting your movement in this way and force the green stone to eventually end up on corner B. With this strategy, I can guarantee that the game can always end in exactly 15 turns, no matter how well you play. Now, sure, from the center of the board, even while being restricted to two directions, there are still numerous different routes the green stone can take to reach any of the four corners. But at the end of the day, no matter which route it ends up taking, it has to make four moves in any given direction and four other moves in an orthogonal direction to reach a corner. And since I can always force you to move in one of two directions, then I can make sure you lose after you've moved eight times. Okay. As far as how many redstones will be on the board after a game of optimal play, well, since the game is always over after 15 turns, and since exactly one redstone is added to the board at the end of each of our turns, then no matter how an optimal game is played out, there will always be 15 redstones on the board by the end of the game. Okay, let's be honest, this game kind of sucks. The rules are easy to exploit, and the player going first has pretty much no chance of winning. So I wanted to see if there was anything I could change to make the game more balanced and give player one a bit more of a fighting chance. And I think an easy fix is an obvious one. Just add more initial green stones to the board. Okay, maybe not that many. Let's cap the number at four since there are only four corners. After playing around with a few different starting formations, I found that arranging them in this way made for the most interesting of games. As far as adjusting the rules to account for these newly added stones, let's say that the game ends when none of the green stones can move anymore. 
And keep in mind that a greenstone can still move even while being on a corner intersection. We'll say that player 1 wins if the game ends and there are less than 2 greenstones on corner intersections, while player 2 wins if the game ends and there are more than 2 greenstones on corner intersections. And if exactly 2 greenstones are on corner intersections, then the game ends in a draw. Alright, here's my question to you guys. Does the player going first have a winning strategy this time around, or are they still doomed to lose? And again, how many redstones will be on the board by the end of the game if both players play optimally? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like. It really helps the channel out. And while you're at it, subscribe for the many more math puzzles coming very soon.